Thank you for tuning in to Beyond the Dais, a podcast about the stories taking place in and around El Paso County, Colorado. I'm your host, Scott Anderson, and it is once again time for another edition of Strategy Team Sessions. I think this is everybody's favorite version of the podcast, and uh, you can, you'll see why based on the two guests that I have here today. We're, I'm very excited for this. Uh, this gives me a chance to catch up with some of my coworkers from the strategy team and discuss all the things that they're working on at any given time. That said, I want to introduce the two coworkers who are with me today. First is the Deputy Director of Communications, Natalie Sosa. And second is Amy Jo Fields, our Marketing Communications Manager. How are you two doing today? We're good, Scott. I'm good. Yes, Excited wonderful. to be here with you. You both look so excited to be here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't know that this had become like the next dentist's office, but uh, that's definitely what it looks like here. I'm not sure how to feel about that, but that's okay. I'm glad you two showed up. No, we're excited to to be talking with you today, Scott. Yeah. Well, I'm excited to talk to you too. Amy Jo didn't say that, but her her face says it all. I said <laughs> we. <laughs> yeah, okay. I, I joined her with me. Oh, no. We are very excited to be here. We are. Awesome. We are. Well, before we get started, you guys can take a quick breather. I'm going to let people know that if they're interested in more stories about people doing good in and around El Paso County or hearing from county leadership about local government priorities and how they operate, you can find additional episodes of this podcast on your podcast platform of choice. Do either of you have a podcast platform of choice? Um, I listen on Podbean. Oh, all right. I listen on, um, it's my orange, hold on. We're off to a great Spotify. Start. Spotify. Spotify. It's not even orange. Yeah, it's I was green. like, well, orange. Spotify is not orange. Okay. <laughs> I got my colors wrong. Spotify is my. That's okay. My orange orange and green. I can see how you can get it mixed up. All right. So uh, it's been a little while since both of you have been on the podcast. You've both been on the podcast before, which is a rare opportunity for people. I just want to let you know this is this is a rare opportunity. You should feel really <laughs> okay. good about this. Uh, but since people may have missed those episodes, uh, can you talk a little bit about what your roles here are? are at El Paso County. Uh, Natalie, we'll start with you. Um, so like you mentioned, I'm the Deputy Director of Communications for El Paso County. Um, I oversee our strategy team, which includes um, open records, um, includes um, you, Scott, who does the podcast. We have um, Samantha, who does our, our website, and Deborah social media. So kind of got a, a, a good, rounded group of, of people that I oversee and, and work with, and um, just a great bunch. And um, for me, I um, have my own set of clients. I um, One of my clients is Pikes Peak Regional Office of Emergency Management, uh, who were very busy last week. Um, but I, I work with them and make sure that we are kind of communicating about, you know, making sure that our community is prepared for emergencies and also um, communicating during emergencies. I also, um, my other client is economic development. So I get to, to work with ec economic development team to get out information about uh, different housing initiatives and different um, economic opportunities. So real excited about that. Awesome. And for those listening, how long have you been in this role? Um, so I've been in this particular role for about four years, mm -hmm. um, but I actually started with the county in 2003. So awesome. my initial background was with the sheriff's Over office. 20 years with El Paso County. Well, I left for five years to go work for the city of Fountain. Um, <sighs> yes. So I took a little bit of a break, but I, I, I did came back. El Paso County is, is my home. Awesome. Well, thank you. Uh, Amy Jo, how about you? What, what, talk about your role here at El Paso County. I am the marketing communications manager, so my primary role is to help market and promote different programs within El Paso County, and I also have some clients. I have uh, veteran services, planning and community development, and the El Paso County Fair, which I'm very passionate about. So one of the things that is new, for Amy Jo at least, since she came on last, is her role with planning and community development. That's new. This actually only happened a few weeks ago. Uh, Natalie, uh, can you talk about why it's important for us to switch things up sometimes on the team? So it's really important for our team to kind of, we, we, I don't want to say serve, but we support many departments and offices throughout El Paso County. And so for, you know, uh, me and uh, the, de the executive director, it's important for us to make sure that our team is well-rounded, that they have a good um, 
view perspective of, of everything that goes on within El Paso County. And so it just gives everyone an opportunity to kind of rotate, um, get to know some other departments and their services and their programs and the things that they're doing, and um, find a way to kind of help them, just a new set of eyes to help them get the word out on, on the things that these different offices and departments are doing. So it's really more for professional development, helping our team to grow, helping our team to be well-rounded and uh, have a, a just a broad understanding of, of what happens within El Paso County. Yeah, and what I really like about that too is it promotes, I, you, people, a lot of people call it like bench depth, right? Um, building you know, b- Building out your bench, right? Um, there have been, a, you know, I've worked for a number of different companies in the past, and I feel like anytime you were slotted into a position at a company, that was just the position you filled. Like there wasn't much opportunity to expand outside of that or to get different opportunities. And what is really cool about this is it really allows everyone on the team to expand within their own role. Um, so it's one of those things that, you know, it happens on occasion. Uh, I've been able to do public works and uh, also planning community development myself. And it's just one of those things where it makes me feel good about where I am because, you know, there's a lot of, uh, not a lot, but there's change that happens, right? And being able to do different things kind of helps you uh, make it feel like the day isn't as uh, routine, I guess. Maybe some people like routine, but that's not really my thing. Uh, <laughs> but, but being able to do different things uh, brings fun to uh, to an organization, in, in my opinion. So um, that's one thing about this or, this organization and specifically this department. Um, that was really cool is being able to switch things up every now and then. No, I, I mean, I'm really happy to be doing a planning and community development. My previous clients uh, was Parks and Community Services, and I also had Justice Services along with that. And I love Parks and I love Justice Services, but it's a good opportunity for me to expand my knowledge base and You know, when we're in the room with different leaders in El Paso County, it just represents our department much better because we all know something about it. And Vernon and Natalie always talk about utility players on the team, and this just makes us more well-rounded, and it helps us professionally as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, So one of the things that, Natalie, you alluded to when you were talking about some of your duties is your role with uh, PPROEM, which is the Pikes Peak Regional Office of Emergency Management. Uh, in case you didn't know, this past week, El Paso County Region received a lot of snow. Uh, we had the office closed for Thursday and Friday because of it. Uh, a lot was going on. So, Natalie, what does that have to do with our jobs at the county and why is that part of our jobs so vital to the work that we do? <laughs> so, um, yes, El Paso County was closed, but we were not closed. That's we right. were uh, <laughs> communicating about the, um, the different things that were going on um, as a result or the impact of the storm. Um, and so my role with uh, the Pikes Peak Regional Office of Emergency Management doesn't start the day of the storm. Um, and so we do a lot of uh, preparedness messaging even before the storm hits. So, you know, a year from now, we're, we're, I mean, a couple months before winter, we're messaging about being prepared for winter. And so we're hoping that our community is prepared. Uh, but then when we know we're getting a snowstorm, we're, you know, putting out that preparedness message, making sure that people have the information that they need to make decisions to help keep themselves safe um, and make sure that they're prepared. And so um, it's a critical component of what we do. Um, it's all hands on deck when there is um, an emergency, whether it be the winter storm, whether it be a fire. Um, we really have to get out there and, and be communicating with our, our community and making sure that they understand, you know, um, what is going on, that they are prepared, and that they are, um, and that they do everything to, to make sure that they're safe. So it's a big part of what we do. It's a critical part of what we do, and it's important um, work that we do when it comes to communicating about emergencies. And I would be remiss if I didn't um, promote peak alerts um, to make sure that if you are not signed up for peak alerts, make sure that you go and uh, sign up on Pikes Peak. I'm sorry, peakalerts.org, www.peakalerts.org, and make sure that you sign up so that you can receive those emergency notifications. So uh, along with that, it's not just you that's responding. You mentioned that it's all hands on deck whenever these things happen. Mm -hmm. Part of the... uh, I guess part of the part of our jobs is that we rotate being on call and, yes. uh, and re- helping uh, report for these sort of circumstances. Uh, for you, as someone who sort of leads that program, 
uh, within our department. Can you talk about the on-call procedure for our department and, again, why we rotate it around and how that helps us build um, build out our skill set? Um, so it's really important that we you know, make sure that it is all hands on deck, but we do have people that are on call to initially respond if we do have an emergency. Um, and why that's important is just to give everybody that experience of hey, you know, what do I do if I'm called because we're having a, a wildfire and we're having evacuations? Or, what do, you know, what do I do if there's a winter storm? And so it's, it's making sure that as they're on call, they're prepared and they're ready to um, respond and know what they need to do to get the community prepared for such events. So um, really, before it was normally just kind of the director and executive director that would be on call. Um, but doing it this way, it just really gives, again, just another um, set of skill set knowledge um, for, you know, how to communicate during an emergency. Um, and I will say that there are different components that go into, you know, communicating an emergency. There's that social media component. There's that component of uh, the media, you know, getting information out to the media, making sure that our elected officials and our uh, first responders are um, doing briefings to give an update about, you know, the operations and the things that are happening behind the scenes to um, help mitigate the emergency. Um, so there's a lot going on behind the scenes um, besides just preparing and getting the messaging out to the community. Um, there's other people working and, and doing things to, you know, try to mitigate. And so we want to communicate about that as well and make sure that the community knows, you know, what's going on, what we're doing about it, and how it's impacting them and, and what they can do to be prepared. So Amy Joe, you've had the, uh, I'll call it opportunity, to be a, a, our primary on-call person dur during a time where you needed to do some extra work, maybe uh, before the sun came up. Uh, <laughs> uh, talk about that experience a little bit, uh, what you were doing to kind of fill that role, and why for you it's such an important aspect of the work that you do. Okay. Well, you know, it's a lot of logistics that the primary uh, person takes on and, and the secondary, whoever is on-call. We're monitoring weather and uh, doing messaging for our employees uh, and our elected officials and making sure that they're aware of this different situations and have all the information to make the necessary decisions. And um, we do a lot of prepared work that is before the sun comes up. So we're on weather calls. We're talking with um, knowledge experts on what's going on and how we can help. Um, our, met our role isn't to actually maybe do something, but we our role is to communicate that to our residents, uh, to our employees, and to our leadership as well. And it's important um, because we're in the communications department, so we need to communicate what's happening and help people be aware, prepared, and make the decisions they need to make um, to keep them safe. Awesome. So I want to move on to something else that was announced this past week. Uh, th which was the theme for this year's El Paso County Fair. Amy Jo just lit up. I mean, you just so <laughs> wonderful. Uh, along with some of the new entertainment offerings that are going to be available at this year's El Paso County Fair. Uh, Amy Jo, I might as well talk to you about it. Yes, uh, tell me why this is going to be the best year yet for our El Paso County Fair. Well, the 2024 El Paso County Fair theme is it's epic out here, and we have some epic entertainment. The fair is going to be July 13th through the 20th in Calhoun, Colorado. And our, the main uh, entertainment is going to be a pirate high dive show, which will be very exciting. Very cool. And lumberjacks. So in between their shows, they're also going to be doing some chainsaw carvings, which are a fave of mine. And then we have a stage show of fire stage dancers that will be in the Farmer State Bank Pavilion during the day. So there's these three major entertainments. So when, when you go to the fair and you buy admission or you come on a free day, maybe El Paso County Day or Dollar Day or many of the discounted days, included with that admission, so for no extra charge, you get to see these various entertainment, the pirate show, the lumberjacks, and the fire dancers, as well as 4-H and livestock shows. Um, they have creative arts, so you can see different art projects, different tabletop projects that kids do, and... Um, there's always going to be a carnival, lots of fair food and vendors, and I'm really excited about the fair. I love the fair. Anytime there's an opportunity to get a funnel cake, you're going to find me wherever that opportunity is. <laughs> yeah. So very excited about that. Uh, w another thing I want to talk about about the fair is uh, two, I don't know if they're official, I'll call them unofficial for the moment right now, spokespeople 
for the fair that are also new this year. Uh, I believe their names are Kyle and Farley. Did I get that right? Yes. Tell me, tell me about Kyle and Farley. So we have two mascots, an alpaca and a miniature Highlander and, named Kyle and Farley. And we have created a cartoon series for them. So they'll be doing different updates through cartoons. But you can also meet them in person at the fair. And so uh, they're just gonna a fun way to advertise different events and programs that we have at the fair. And who whose idea was Kyle and Farley? You can take full credit if it was you. Because it, it wasn't me. These little friends have been <laughs> kind of, um, I don't know what the word is, but they've just taken on the role of little ambassadors. They've been at different markets and festivals that the Fair and Event Center has put on throughout the year. And so on Shauna, the Fair, Super, Fair and Event Center supervisor, kind of thought, you know, why don't we make it official? So... We're working with their owners and just making them little mascots for the El Paso County Fair, (laughs) and it's wonderful. Awesome. Yeah, so definitely keep your eyes out for any marketing that has to do with the fair because you're probably going to see Kyle and Farley somewhere involved with marketing for the fair. At least I I hope so. Guaranteed. Oh, guaranteed. I'm talking to the person who does the marketing for the fair, so it's (laughs) a good good person to talk to. Um, Natalie, we had the opportunity last year to participate in the fair, we, we all went together yes. to the fair, and uh, the El Paso County booth had uh, probably, look, the fair was awesome last year. There were a lot of really cool things at the fair, but I might be a little biased in saying that uh, our dunk tank was like the highlight of, this, the, highlight of the week. Uh, can we expect to see you participating in a dunk tank again this year? You know, yes, I'm always down to get dunked in the dunk tank. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always down. And I'm always down for a little competition within our team mm-hmm. um, and also participating in some of the other um, competitions. I think you won one. Look, I, I don't I don't like to promote my uh, my wins over bosses or anything like that. So uh, we're, we're not going to get into that here. But, uh, I, you know. I might be a little bit more than meets the eye yeah. when, when it comes to these physical challenges. That's yes. all I'm, that's all I'm going to say. Yes. But uh, no, I, I hope we get to do something like that again this year. That was re- really, really fun last year. It was. Um, I'm glad that I was in there first because boy, did that thing get a lot of dirt and <laughs> yes. grass in it. So, uh, yeah, so pro we, tip for whoever's participating, try and be first into the dunk thing. <laughs> and we had some, some people, some kids and stuff with some really strong arms. I mean, we got dunked quite a bit. Yeah. Which was which was a, which was pretty nice because yes. the water was very cold, very very cold, and it was really hot. Yes. It was a really hot day, so that yes. was really nice. But uh, now I'm I'm really excited for the fair this year. Uh, my you know my family and kids were able to come out last year, and we did the carnival rides, we did the shows, we did we did like all the stuff, and it was it was so much fun. Um, and I'm really looking forward to the lumberjacks this year, <laughs> this year. I don't know what it is. Have you ever seen the like lumberjack games that they have come on like ESPN or something? Mm-hmm. And you know, you see people like chopping it, like divots into wood and then putting planks in and climbing up on it. Like that's one of the most like mind boggling things to me. I don't know how that's <laughs> even possible, but uh, very cool. I'm very excited for the fair this year. Um, I want to move on to something that I think is really important for us to think about and talk about. Um, as members of a team, members of a department, and that is recent successes that we've had. I think it's important to really focus on that because I think in any job, honestly, there can be a lot of uh, things that make it difficult, that make you feel kind of like, oh gosh, uh, here comes another thing, right? But uh, those successes are really important to talk about so we can know, you know, this is, these are the things that we're really good at and that we were able to accomplish. Um, So, Amy, Joe, I'm going to start with you. Um, t- let's talk about one of the recent successes you've had and why it's so important to the work that you do. Well, I want to talk about the fair again. Excellent. But I'll also talk about something else. Uh, the fair has just been something that is very near and dear to my heart, something I'm very passionate. It's actually the reason I'm here in this role. And um, we have been doing, or I have been doing marketing in like an official capacity since 2021, so I started with El Paso County in a professional role in 2020. And since like doing all the marketing campaign, we've really seen a growth in attendance, um, impressions for brand sponsors and, and partnerships, and that's been really successful. And why that is important is that success really helps us create kind of like a blueprint for our future marketing campaigns and other things that we promote and other programs and services that the county offers. 
And the most recent success, one of the things that I'm very proud of that actually all of us worked on was the PACT Act. So one, one of my clients, Veteran Services, they um, were challenged to, um, there was a new law that passed, and it was called the PACT Act. And it's the largest um, VA benefit package passed in the history of the VA. And it allowed for new benefits to be possible for veterans and spouses and families um, for veterans that were exposed to Agent Orange and different um, toxic exposures in the Gulf Wars. And our client, Veteran Services, their main service is to provide, basically assist veterans to capitalize on benefits that are owed to them, essentially. And the PACT Act, um, previously those were unrealized benefits, and we have approximately 100,000 veterans in El Paso County. And 5% 5% of them, according to the White House, could be eligible for those benefits. And so they needed to get the word out and help veterans in our community have more benefits. And so we were a part of that marketing campaign. And uh, we had a goal of increasing um, the number of claims filed by El Paso County veterans by 50%. And we surpassed that by over 500%. So it's a really great thing that we did was helping a client really do their service well to the community and I don't know something I'm really proud of with El Paso County what our veteran service officers do and the work that they do really changes people's lives and we saw that firsthand yeah I think one of the really cool things about the the kind of work that we do is very little of it is done for ourselves Mm -hmm. Um, you really get to have that opportunity to feel that like service mindset that mm-hmm. I b- believe it's one of our core values is service focus. Is that, am I right on that? You are. Oh, how about that? Um, so like having that in mind as you go about the work that you do and being able to see such an effective outcome for a campaign that you work on um, is it's one of the, I, I kind of mentioned earlier, it's really one of those things that like kind of helps get you through some of those uh, more difficult times in a job. Mm-hmm. Cause you know, like, like I said, everyone has difficult times, but when you're able to get behind something and really support it, like I think the way that our team was able to do and along with the help of veteran services uh, for the PACT Act is just, it's, it's one of those things that you're like, it's really, it's really great to be here and to do this kind of work and to like actually be helping people that live in El Paso County. Yeah, we did it on a shoestring budget. We had $1,000, <laughs> and we had a few months. And because we knew our collective experience as a team, we knew what worked well, and we knew our community well. And we were able to really implement that. And um, working with Marshall Bosworth, the division manager of Veteran Services, with his idea of doing a three-day packed act claim clinic, we were able to reach, in total, over 1,600 people and those benefits last long into the future, and it's really deeply meaningful, so much so that the United States Secretary of the VA even acknowledged Marshall on a national level, and so that was really incredible and incredible for us to be a part of that as well. Yeah, so cool. Like, that, that's just such a cool thing, and you know, you mentioned the number 1,600, which it, it, it's a lot. That's a lot of people, and if you know, but in the grand scheme, you're like, oh, big number, 1,600. I don't know. If you really want to know what that number means, uh, I did an interview, would have been, I think it was in July of last year, uh, with a surviving spouse of, of a veteran. Her name is Michelle Hill. And she talked about what that meant for her individually. And if you think about it in the, in the idea of that 1600 times Mm -hmm. it is a lot like Mm -hmm. it's it's life-changing for a lot of people um in in that kind of way so um you know again like it's just one of those things where like it feels really good to be able to work on that kind of stuff and you know when you come into a role like this you probably don't think that that's even an opportunity Mm -hmm. or something you'll be able to do but we really do have like this really cool uh, ability from time to time to work on things that really help change people's lives so um Really cool. I'm glad that you mentioned that because, you know, you mentioned we all participated. It's one of those things that, for me, if I were to answer this question, that would definitely be part of the recent successes. Um, Natalie, how about you? What's a recent success that you've had? Um, so the recent success, and we are, we're getting ready to hold our first um, media re- spokesperson media relations training um, with El Paso County. It's something that I 
when I first uh, came over here uh, from the sheriff's office four years ago, something that was a goal of mine is to create a, a training. Um, and I feel like it falls right into kind of where we're at with our, our core values, which is being, you know, transparent, open, and trustworthy in our communication. And so I am proud that we were able to get, um, we have, a, how can I put it, we have a, um, a team of public information officers throughout El Paso County. And we were able to work together collaboratively to put together a training um, to make sure that, you know, the people that, you know, we, we talk to the media a lot about some of our programs or services. And a lot of times we're putting people um, on camera that may not be as comfortable or, or as competent as speaking in front of the camera because, you know, they're, they're the ones, the subject matter experts and the ones with the expertise, but they don't do it enough, right? To, um, and so we just kind of work together to, to put together a training to make sure that we have, you know, a team of, of, of spokespersons that are, are trained and feel confident and comfortable um, speaking, you know, to the media, speaking to the community about the different things that are going on in El Paso County. So one of the successes is just us getting together collaboratively, working together to put this training together, and we're really excited to have our first class on in April 1st, and I think it's going to um, be helpful um, because there's a lot of good things that El Paso County is doing throughout El Paso County, and we want to make sure that we that our community is aware of the program services and the things that we're doing that, that impact them. And this is, I think, something that's really important to highlight, and you can actually speak to this because this just happened to you about 30 minutes ago based on my uh, count here. Um, once the record light turns on, it does something to people. Uh, you can have all the knowledge in the world yes. and you can know everything about a certain topic, but once a camera is pointed in your face, once you see a red light turn on that says you're recording, something happens in a person's brain that like shorts it out. Yes. Almost. Mm -hmm. it, like um, naturally. And I think the one of the important things about this media relations training is to try and help people overcome that. Yes. Because I think it's it's normal for people to get a little bit uh, hesitant when they're put on the spot. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, there are some people who thrive in that sort of environment, but people who go into uh, the, the government sector, I would say, and especially a lot of the people that were asked, that are asked to speak in front of a camera for El Paso County, you know, they didn't go to school for public speaking. They didn't go to school for, you know, uh, knowledge on a, a specific subject that might come up. And so, you know, when we're having people like uh, a county engineer, right, um, people like uh, someone who is head of economic development, these aren't necessarily roles that you think of as like, oh, yeah, like, they're going to be out in front of the media all the time and talking to people. So we need to make sure that they are ready and prepared, you know, to be on camera every week and talking about X, Y, and Z at a moment's notice. Uh, but lo and behold, that's where we find ourselves, right? So can you talk a little bit about, about that aspect of it and how, you know, we're trying to change that feeling for people who are going to be participating in this program? Yeah, we just, you know, again, we just want them to be um, comfortable. We want them to be prepared um, and so this training is, you know, like I said, we got a wealth of experience and expertise in, throughout the county of, of people that that's their, their daily job is to speak to the media and to communicate information. And so this is their chance to be able to kind of share. We've all been in that place where, you know, you could have gone to school or you, you could have gone to a training to do it, right? But like you said, once that camera, once that recording turns on, you know, everybody gets nervous. Everybody, I, you know, I can even think of the first time that I had to give an interview on camera. And, you know, it's like, um, 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 you know, you just get really, really nervous, right? Mm -hmm. And so this is an opportunity for, which is why I feel like it's a success. It's an opportunity for, you know, that expertise, the the, the experience of, of our public information office to kind of come and give back and share and kind of nurture um, these new spokespersons to, you know, make sure that they, you know, they feel confident, they feel comfortable, that they, you know, get more comfortable in front of a camera, that they have the tools that they need to kind of communicate some of the messages that they want to put out there to the community. And so um, this is a way for us to give back. And um, it's also a way for us to build that bench of, of spokespersons and, and make sure that we have um, 
you know, people that um, that want to and, and are comfortable uh, communicating about El Paso County because there's a lot going on and a lot of things that we need to communicate about. Um, and and sometimes, you know, we're not the ones, you know, the, the public information officers are not the ones with the expertise in different um, programs or services. And mm-hmm. so we need to, to build our bench and call upon those people that, that do have that expertise and that do have that experience to be able to talk about those things. And, and not for nothing, I, I do want to mention sort of our role in, in this. It, and you are the one spearheading this. Uh, but like you mentioned, there's a team of uh, public information officers that are going to be participating. I think one of the things that you know people may not think about all the time when they see someone go in front of a camera is generally there's a team of people behind that one person sort of preparing them for that interview. And aside from their own knowledge that they have, which is why they're in front of the camera in the first place, uh, people like us create talking points for people to be able to go on camera and uh, use as a fallback may not sound like the best term, but it really is like a fallback in case people are asked questions that they may not know the answer to right off the top of their head. Uh, these are things that we offer for them to be able to help sort of bridge the gap between uh, maybe when the question is asked and when the answer kind of gets to them. Um, can you talk about the PIO's role in terms of preparing people for those interviews as a means to, uh, I guess, elaborate more on this media relations training. So um, we would be the ones kind of facilitating the, the the interview and stuff, but behind the scenes, we'd be working. We will be working with the um, the spokesperson to kind of, like you said, developing those key messages. The key, you know, wanting to identify, you know, who's our audience and what are we wanting them to know about, you know, this service, this. Pro, you know, this service, this program, what are we wanting them to know about that? So putting those key messages so that they make sure that, you know, they're touching on those as they're doing the interviews. Um, but we're also anticipating, you know, questions that might be coming up about the service or program, making sure that we can answer those questions, that we have the information available to be able to provide that um, during the interview. But we're also kind of talking through things and making sure, like, what is the message and wh- what what do we want our community to know? And so, you know, we work with our spokespersons to make sure that they're prepared um, and that they have um, that they know what what they want to communicate and what they want people. Even if there's like a call to action, you know, making sure that you know we are are delivering that message that we that we are concise, that we're um, clear about what we want um, the community to know about what it is that that we're being asked to talk about. We also want them to know we're a partner with them. Um, that they are not alone. That we're doing this together. We are, you know, we're kind of the ones that that work with the media, that kind of facilitate that that relationship. But that we're kind of working with them to make sure that they feel prepared and they they are able to give that message. Yeah, no, and that's actually a really good point because one of the things I definitely don't want to undersell is the knowledge that these spokespeople have in each of their respective places. And I think a lot of the times, at least in, in my experience uh, here at the county, um, my role has been not to like say, hey, here's what you're going to talk about, but more so have a conversation with them and say, okay, like, tell me all the things that you know about this and let me help sort of turn that into like very direct type messaging, right? So they're, you know, it's really easy when a question is asked to kind of just go and not be very concise with your answers. Uh, But the nice thing for us, for our for our uh, subject matter experts is to be able to sort of crystallize that concept that they want to get across that they're telling us, Hey, like if these are the questions that are answered, here's kind of what I'm thinking. And for us to, you know, really turn that into like a real solid answer that can get the point across in a really easy way. And also in a soundbite, right? Because, Mm -hmm. you know, they're, they're, you know, when you do an interview, you could do three minutes of an interview, but really maybe a couple of seconds or a minute is going to be used, you know, so making sure that, you know, with our messaging that we are, being concise, that we're putting it into that that, that soundbite um, that is going to be, you know, concise enough that it's going to deliver the message, but it's also, you know, going to have the key elements of what we want the, the community to know. So as sad as it is to say, we're nearing the end of our conversation here. It's gone by, gone by fast. It's been really fun. Uh, but Amy Jo, I want to give you an opportunity to add anything else that you think would be important for listeners to know about. Yes, I just want to reiterate that the El Paso County Fair will be July 13th the 20th, 2024 in Calhan, Colorado. And there's going to be a lot of free um, opportunities. There's dollar day, discount day, and many different theme days for the family to attend. Really cost effective. And they've worked really hard at making sure that 
from the moment you enter the gate to the time you leave that you have an entertainment epic um, experience at the El Paso County Fair. There's going to be new nightly different activities during the week, including an eras party. And so you can find all information and tickets go on sale April 1st at www.elpasocountyfair.com. And then I also wanted to like toot our own horn collectively. Our team has really only been together as it is now for a year, maybe a little bit more. And we're award-winning in multiple areas, our internal newsletter, our external newsletter, The Courier, and this podcast. So it's things that we're really proud of and you know, we do it all in the name of service, really in transparency and collaboration with our partners. Awesome. I always appreciate those, those mentions. If you, if you can't say it here in this, you know, conversation, where can you say it, right? right. Uh, Natalie, how about you? Um, you know, I'm just really excited. We've got a real talented team. Um, our communications department is really talented. And so we've got a lot of initiatives coming up in the coming year that we're really excited about. And um, Scott, um, you've got something really exciting coming down the pipe. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about that? Do you want to <laughs> share? Are you ready to share? Uh, just Maybe just a little bit. Um, so this summer uh, in July, we're going to hit episode 100 of the podcast, which is like beyond crazy to think about. Um, you know, this started August of... 2022 wow. and been putting out a new episode every week since then. And so just do the math and uh, uh, mid July uh, you get to episode hundred and uh, we are going to be planning something pretty, pretty cool for episode 100. Uh, it's all, it's in the works, but still pretty early stages. Uh, it's going to be called the forum. It's a, the idea is to have community conversations and to really facilitate that in a way that is not common, I think, at least for this region. You know, I see a couple of things take place throughout the year where there are community-type conversations, uh, but I wanted to more focus on voices that uh, we don't generally get the opportunity to hear from. And when more information comes out about this year's, uh, or this year's edition, maybe it'll be an annual thing, I don't know. But um you're gonna you're gonna understand what I mean when I when I say you know voices that you probably don't hear from too often. So um, I'm I'm really excited about that. Like I said, more to come uh, in in the coming weeks and, and months. But uh, look forward to that this July. It's actually going to be right after the fair. So July is going to be a busy month for Team El Paso County Communication. <laughs> Expect nothing less. That's, that's right. Uh, well, I really appreciate you both taking the time today to speak with me and uh, for the work that you do here at El Paso County. So thank you for being here and uh, thank you for your contributions to the team. I really, really appreciate it. Thanks for having us. Thanks. God. If you're interested in listening to additional episodes of Beyond the Dais, be sure to look for us on Podbean or wherever you get your podcasts. Thanks for listening and we'll see you next time. Mm-hmm.